<laughs> Let's stand and sing Amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. And I love you. I love you. Looking in the sky, whoever could deny your glory. Gazing into space and hurl a new and race appears. Seeing you in all your majesty, I wonder how it could be. But you delight in me. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. You are an amazing God, and I love you. I love you, Lord of everything. No other God or King is like you. Powerful and strong, your tender is your song to me. Knowing the extent of all my sin, however, could you be pleased? your love on me. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. Just one word. You measure the mountains in your hand. Yet your treasure is broken and make me whole. Crown us with your love. You light up the heavens with just one word. You measure the mountains in your hands. You treasure the broken and make them whole. You crown us with your love. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. You are an amazing God, and I love you, I love you. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. Lord, you are an amazing God. Good morning, Christchurch. It's great to be uh, together, uh, together and just worship our incredible, amazing God, um, who is from everlasting to everlasting. It's a privilege to be with you. Uh, my name's Owen, and I'm hosting this morning. As you can see, I, I took the Wales South Africa defeat quite badly. Um, <laughs> But uh, don't worry, it's fine, I've got over it. Um, it's really amazing to come together. We're going to spend some time worshipping uh, our risen Lord Jesus, and then we're going to hear uh, the word preached to us by Andy, so that's going to be really, really incredible. I just ask you to just use this time to reflect on the glory and the splendor of how amazing God is, that he is from everlasting to everlasting. He 
holds mountains in his hands that he created and yet he treasures the broken and he holds us near. Uh, This morning, you might feel like you need the God who can crush mountains in his hand. You might need a God who can step in. You might need a God who's going to hold you near. Well, you've got a God who can do both and much, much more. Mm -hmm. So let's spend some time worshipping and glorifying him this morning. If you're a visitor, you're so, so, so welcome. Uh, I really hope you enjoy worshipping with us, Andy. I was thinking this week about the incident shortly after the transfiguration when the father came to Jesus and asked for (laughs) healing for his son. But what was interesting, when he came, he said, if you can, Jesus, everything is possible. Sorry, so he said, "If if you can, would you come and heal my son? And Jesus said, if you can, everything is possible for him who believes. And shortly afterwards, the father said, I do believe. Help me with my unbelief. What does that mean? It's the fact that we are all, we have imperfect faith. And that's okay, because we're fallen. We're not perfect. Jesus is the only one who's perfect. But we can come to him and call on the Holy Spirit to fill us beyond all measure. And that's what we're here to do today, isn't it? As well as coming to glorify God, it's to come and be refueled and refilled. So I just want to ask you, just to hold your hands out. Holy Spirit, we just cry, come out. Come down and fill us afresh, Lord. It says in the scriptures, be being filled. It's not a one-time thing, as we've talked about many times. Holy Spirit, will you come amongst us in power? Will you show us what it means to be sons and daughters of the living God? And no matter what we're facing, no matter what difficulties we have in front of us, our faith is a gift, and we can cry out to the Abba Father for more. Say, Lord, fill me afresh with your faith, faith in you and who you are and what you can do. So, Holy Spirit, we just pray as we come and worship your name, will you minister to hearts, will you fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Amen. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Youngsters, you know the bit I mean? Three claps before the verse, okay? So guys, make sure you get in there and clap nice and loud. We want to see Jesus lifted high Banner of fly this land, that all men might see the truth and know, He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land. You want to die and see the truth and know, here we go, He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, Wanna see, wanna see Jesus lifted high Step by step we're moving forward Little by little we're taking ground Every prayer a powerful weapon Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down We wanna see Jesus lifted high A banner that flies across this land that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven We wanna see, wanna see Wanna see Jesus lifted high We wanna see, wanna see Wanna see Jesus step by step Step by step we're moving forward Little by little we're taking ground Lifted high, banner that flies across this land. I know I might see the truth, I know. We wanna see, wanna see, wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, wanna see, 
wanna see Jesus. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see Jesus lifted high. I see the Lord and he is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. I see you Lord and you are high and lifted up and your train fills the temple and I cry home. I see your holiness and light surrounds your throne. Who am I to come before you? But now my guilt is gone, my sins are washed away, and your blood I come. Who am I that I should gain? Father's love. Now my eyes have seen the King. Touch my lips that I may tell of all you've done. Fill my heart, I cry. Be glorified. I see the Lord and He is high and it up and his train fills the temple. I see you, Lord, and you are high and lifted up, and your train fills the temple. And I cry, Holy, Holy is the Lord. Yeah, I just, I just encourage you to raise your voices and just let's just praise our God who is an awesome God. Just sing out your own songs. Just pray out prayers of praise, speak in tongues. Let's just lift our voices and praise the King of Kings. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'd just like to uh, ask Phil up. He's just going to share something. It's just God's encouraged him in this week, and then we're going to continue worshipping. Good morning. We've just come back from holiday in Devon at Pete and Corina. It's a fantastic place. Anyway, apart from that, I had my good book outside on the table, and I was reading it, and we are studying Acts in the Bible uh, school or school or on a Friday morning, which is fantastic. But as I was sitting there, I saw the dark clouds above my head. And as I was looking, in the monks the dark clouds, there was a, a place, a hole, you might call it, of blue. And I thought to myself, that's fantastic. Because we are surrounded by darkness. This world is surrounded by darkness. But as I looked through that hole, I saw the blueness of the sky. And my spirit went through that hole and I was amongst, I was with God. And God showed me his glory. Because when we look up, the clouds are dark. But when I was up there, the clouds were white. God is marvellous because he showed me his glory through that hole and that glory is for you and for me because we are coming to a time when Christ is coming back to take his church home so those who do not know Christ receive him look to him find him because he's knocking because I found Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ means so much to me he is my everything so when you're in the darkness, remember what I said, through the darkness there is glory. Amen. And uh, I feel that God uh, gave me something in the week that um, when I was praying for our gathering today, and uh, it was this, um, it's in Isaiah 46, and it follows on from what Phil has shared and from the theme of the morning so far. Uh, sorry, verse 9. It says, Remember what happened long ago. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and no one is like me. And the Lord showed me, uh, as I was praying about this, that our meetings, like this meeting, shouldn't be like the drummer in the box. You know, we've got him in the box to contain him <laughs> and to stop him taking over the whole meeting. No, God wants the opposite of that for his presence amongst us. He doesn't want to be put in a box of our meeting. He wants to break out this morning as this God who's so awesome, as Phil has described, this God who is so huge and great and wonderful in all his ways. And he wants to break out in our lives. Whenever we meet in Jesus' name like this, it should never be ordinary. It should be extraordinary because we have an extraordinary God. I wonder if I could pray for us as a whole congregation this morning. Could we stand together? If you can stand, stand. I'd like to pray that God would do something extraordinary this morning in every man, woman and child and that we'd experience an extraordinary God. There's none like him, no one else like him. Amen. He controls the whole universe and he controls time. And everything that's happening in the world today he is sovereign over it all. And everything that's happening in your life, he is sovereign over it all. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful thing? Let's pray. Father God, we never want to get used to just coming to church and singing songs and listening to clever messages. We want to meet you, Lord. We want to meet our extraordinary God and to have extraordinary times together. When you break into our lives and deal with us and change us, we want to leave today having encountered Almighty God, the God who loves us, the God who is holy, the God who is awesome in all his ways. Lord, stir my heart, stir our hearts as we enter into your presence, that your presence would be upon our time, that we wouldn't put you in a box like the drummer. Be free, dear God, to do whatever you have planned to do this morning. Be, don't be contained. We want you to break out extraordinarily in our lives and in our meeting. In Jesus' name.
in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 eternal spark I call you healer you can mend any broken heart call you faithful father you finish everything you start my soul was made to respond I know you by a thousand names and you deserve every single one given me a million ways to be amazed at what you've done and I am lost in wonder at all you do know you by a thousand names and I'll sing them back to you love is boundless Love is boundless Beyond what I could dream Your grace is patient You're never giving up on me I call you bondage breaker Cause you handed out the prison keys My soul was made To be free I know you by a thousand names you deserve every single one Given me a million ways To be amazed at what you've done And I am lost in wonder At all you do I know you by a thousand names I call you maker. I call you maker. You give life an eternal spark. I call you healer. You can mend any broken heart. I call you faithful father. You finish everything you start. So was made to respond. I know you by a thousand names And you deserve every single one Given me a million ways To be amazed at what you've done And I will lost in wonder All you do I know you by a thousand names But sing them back, sing them back to you You are the rock of ages. You are the rock of ages. You're the great I am. You are king forever, from beginning and the end. You are Lord and servant. You are son of man. You are lion of Judah. You're the risen lamb. The second Adam here to lead us home. You are Yahweh's glory revealed in fresh and bone. You are ocean potter. You will make a way. You are death defeater. You have risen from the grave. You are full of mercy. You are. In love, you are Jesus, Messiah, the one true God. I know you by a thousand names, and you deserve.
you serve every single one You've given me a million ways To be amazed at what you've done And I am lost in wonder At all you do I know you by a thousand names I sing them back to you I know you by a thousand names You deserve every single one Give me a million ways To be amazed at what you've done And I am lost in wonder At all you do Sing me a thousand names And I'll sing them back Sing them back to you I had this picture, but before I share that, just I mean, what's 16 times 3? It doesn't matter, it's still four points less than what South Africa finished with. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, couldn't, couldn't resist. No, I had this, this picture. <laughs> um, it was of a dry well, it just rocks at the bottom. And sometimes we can feel like that. And we heard Andy talking about a father asking for more faith, for God to help with that faith. And he talked about being, being filled with the Holy Spirit. We also have that story of where Moses was told to speak to the rock and water would burst forth from it. And then we have the picture of the lady, the Samaritan at the well. And Jesus said to her, if you have faith in me, springs of living water will come up from inside you. You'll never thirst again. And this is for us all. If you're going through the valley, if you're feeling like you're rolling that boulder up the hill, if you're feeling dry and wrung out, you just need to trust that God is right there with you. And at any moment, his word can come to you and bring forth living water, overflowing, no matter how dry you may feel. Because he doesn't abandon you. He's right there with you. So I'm going to ask Owen just to come and pray into that. For anyone who may just feel like, I feel like that dry well. And you want that fountain of living water just to burst forth and overflow. Because Christ is willing and his word does bring that miracle. Yeah, isn't it amazing when God speaks? And I really feel that God, when Grant shared that, I definitely just felt God resonate that in my heart. And just as Grant was sharing, Duncan came up and and just shared that um, he was drawn to Psalm 63 and um, a similar thing of, of, of thirsting for God, of longing for God and uh, for that water that he, he wants to bring. And I just really feel that God wants to do some, do some work this morning. And I think there are some, really th some people here, maybe you're feeling pretty rocky, you're feeling pretty thirsty. And I know that I, know that I, need, <laughs> I need more of the Spirit this morning. And I just... We're just going to sing through that chorus one last time. And just as we do, if, if that's you this morning, if as Grant was sharing, you're just saying, I just feel like a dry well. As Duncan shared, as you're, if you're thirsting, crying out for, for more, just as we sing this through one last time, just give this time, this opportunity, just hold out your hands, just say, Holy Spirit, please fill me afresh. Because God wants to. He wants to meet with you. He wants to fill you afresh. He wants to come and bring uh, refreshment to that dry land that maybe you feel like you're walking through at the moment. Yeah, and if you're watching online or you're in the room and you're thinking, I don't even know what they're talking about, come and talk to one of us. We'll tell you what it means to step into the river of God and know his presence. To know but we know him by a thousand names and he deserves every single one. I 
know you by a thousand names And you deserve every single one You've given me a million ways To be amazed at what you've done And I am lost in wonder At all you do I know you by a thousand names And I'll sing them back to you by a thousand names and you deserve every single one given me a million ways to be amazed at what you've done and I am lost in wonder at all you do I know you by a thousand names and I'll sing them back sing them back to you Father, thank you that you are, you have a thousand names. You are worthy of all praise and adoration. And Lord, you say, come to me and approach me, our Father. Lord, we are so grateful for all you are. Amen. Amen. We're going to draw our time of worship to a close there. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank you for all that you shared there. Amazing. Um, if you missed my uh, welcome at the start, uh, my name's Owen. It's great to have you with us this morning. If you're a visitor, you're incredibly welcome. Uh, we're gonna, we've obviously just been singing about God's uh, wonder and splendor, and then uh, we will be hearing from the Word of God, and then afterwards there's tea and coffee, so please stay around for that, although I know some of you, we'll, we'll be, we're hoping to finish at 11, don't worry. I know some of you are, are worried, but you'll be able to... Uh, run away for the for the football um there's a visitors section which is over there so if it's your first time or you're new here then please come uh, over there and they'll bring tea and coffee to you if you're not sure where to go uh, it's great to have you with us i've just got a few notices and then i'm going to ask andy to come up and share god's word firstly just uh, for the offering boxes to go around that'd be great um we, uh, we pass around the offering boxes and we, we, we speak about giving at this church um, because we believe it's part of uh, a worshipful life. A worshipful life is um, one that honours and loves God, that speaks of his name and, and, and gives, gives our time, but also gives our finances. And that goes towards all the things we're able to do as a church. Uh, without your giving, we wouldn't be able to uh, keep doing what we do. So thank you so much for your generous giving. A couple of things. Uh, Alpha. Alpha is back. It begins on the Thursday, the 5th of October. It'll be running for seven weeks and uh, we'll provide tea, coffee and snacks each week. Please be praying about people that you can invite. Uh, you can sign up by emailing the office um, and the email is admin at christchurchheltram.org. But if you go to our website, all the information is there. There's a contact form so you don't need to worry about sending an email. The contact form will do that all for you. So if you, you want to invite people to Alpha, uh, I'd really encourage you to be praying, you know, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, uh, your family uh, who need Jesus. You know, think about inviting them to Alpha. Maybe you're here and you don't know who Jesus is. And actually, Alpha is a really great, great opportunity to ask those questions about, about life and about God and about faith. What does it look like to live a life of faith? Uh, Catalyst Festival is back, as Rob said last week. It's back next year. Uh, the details of the event are being finalised, but we can now confirm that the dates are the 23rd to the 26th of August, 2024, and it's at Staffordshire Showground. So it's a slightly different place. So beforehand, it's been um, at Stonely. I want to, yeah, I wanted to say Stonely, and then I was just thinking, oh, is it is it Stonely? Yes, it is Stonely, um, but it's now Staffordshire Showground. Um, so that's we'll be gathering there instead of our usual camp in May. So um, information will be sort of coming out over the next little while. But please get those dates: twenty third to the twenty sixth of August, twenty twenty four, in your diary. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. Uh, and finally, uh, we're still short of people uh, on a Sunday morning to help on task team, specifically on welcome, car parking, fire marshalling, etc., setting up and packing away chairs. Uh, if you 
uh, if you're not serving in, in church and actually is something that you realise that um, you want to be stepping into, then please really be thinking about um, talking to Steve Mewitt or letting the office know um, because that would be really, really great. We need more people. Uh, these chairs don't magically appear. Uh, some amazing, dedicated people come each week and, and put them up and put them away so that other things can run in the week. So I'd really ask to just be praying and thinking um, about that. Wonderful. That's me done. I'd like to ask Andy level up. It's not me fully done, actually. I have one more thing. I'd just like to ask Steve uh, Smith to come out. Dr. Steve Smith uh, it leads Keys, which is uh, a detox program. I'm just going to give him 30 seconds to share about something rather exciting that's happened. Yeah, let's welcome him up. Thank you. 30 seconds starting from now. It is so great to be a part of what you're doing. So thankful to have Hailsham partnering with Keys Community Detox. And I enjoyed seeing our logo up there. So thank you to the Hailsham team and for all of you that support what we do. This is a really great week to celebrate because we've got a, a wonderful team in Yorkshire, many of whom have come down with four guys who, if they don't mind me saying, have been street drinkers for a number of years. They're detoxing on a farm near here, doing incredibly well. So please continue to pray for them. Um, we're going to see some great results. Thank you again for a wonderful partnership. Thank you, Steve. We're, we're so blessed by all you guys do at Keys. We're so blessed and so encouraged to see that all God's doing. So, yeah, we'll just be praying for you guys over this week. Amazing. Wonderful. Andy, over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, now, you might remember last week, Owen preached last week, and uh, he spoke about meeting God in the valley. I don't know if you remember that. I hope you all remember that. And Owen did a soundscape. Do you remember? It was awesome. Uh, I, I had someone at, at, I knew who was at the back observing, yeah, and they made this rather wonderful observation. And that was that it was the older people in the church who really got into it, and I thought that was wonderful. So we're going to have another bit of a soundscape this morning, and I want to encourage not just the older people, but the younger people and the, the teenagers, just, let's really get into this soundscape. So we make these sound effects as we read through the passage. So... If we could have our, um, we're, going to, we're going to start with the call of Elijah, 1 Kings 19. So Elijah departed from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing, <laughs> more, more, <laughs> was plowing, with 12 yoke of oxen uh, in front of him, and he was with the 12th. Now, to stop you there, this picture, not quite right, okay? So 12 yoke of oxen. He's got 12 oxen on, all yoked together with one plow. That's not quite right. There would have been 24 oxen. That's 12 pairs of two. So if we could sort of chop this picture here. Yeah, that's better. Like that. That's a yoke of oxen. Two oxen with a plow, and there is Elijah there. So um, he departed from there. And oh, I've read that bit already. We'll move on. All right, so God, he so often... Um, works with those people who were working. And Elisha was working. He was working. And um, how often that's true, that God calls those who are active, doesn't he? And um, you can see in the background there, you can see Elijah. It's, I'm going to get confused. Elisha, Elijah. Uh, Elijah, and he, can you see in his hand, he's got a red cloak. And that's called a mantle. And he does something rather wonderful, you see. He spoke without speaking. Has there, anyone ever done this to you before? <laughs> yeah? They speak without speaking. What are they saying? If someone just does that. <laughs> Draw it out for me, will you? Yeah. So that's what, this is what he does. So carry on with our, our, um, our passage. Elijah passed by and cast his cloak upon him. He cast his cloak upon him. <laughs> and he left the oxen. <laughs> and he ran after Elijah and said... Let me kiss my mother and my father, and, <laughs> and then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again, for what have I done for you? So there he cast his cloak over him. And um, you know, if, if you see a police officer wearing a police officer's uniform, you know he's a police officer because he's wearing a police officer uniform. And for Elijah, he was wearing a cloak, and it has a special name. It's called, it's called a mantle, and he had a cloak. And he put it on Elisha's shoulders. And you, you wore a cloak if you were a prophet. So 
Elisha knew what was being said when Elijah put this on his shoulders. He was saying, I want you to be my student. That's what he was saying. And Elijah didn't have to say anything. Elisha knew what he meant. And then he says something rather strange. He says, what have I done to you? So he says, let me kiss my mother and my father, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? What a strange thing that Elisha says here. But what he's, what he's really saying is this. I'm not going to force you. I'm asking you to be my student, but I'm not going to force you. So Elijah, Elisha was willing, and we're going to see that in a minute. Uh, so he returned from following him, carrying on with the passage. He returned from following him, and he took the yoke of oxen, and he sacrificed them. Well done. And boiled their flesh <laughs> with the yokes of oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. And he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. And here, Elisha, he destroys all his equipment. All these, these um, oh, it's not there anymore, is it? His equipment, his plows and his, and his oxen, which were worth a lot of money. He just destroyed it all because he didn't want it to be a distraction in his future. And he said more by what he did than by what he said, didn't he? Okay. So Elisha's response, he was willing. Elijah didn't have to force him. His response was of the work of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who convinced Elisha to follow uh, Elijah. So he destroyed his equipment. And then Elisha also was wise. And Elisha trusted in God's truth and in God's plan. And uh, Elisha knew uh, that if he got rid of, um, he knew what to get rid of so he could serve God better. And that's really important. He knew what to get rid of so he could serve God better. And that's true for us today. Thanks. Now, I've got a couple of, I need a couple of volunteers, <clears throat> which I've already selected. So we have Owen, if you could stand just on the floor there, it'd be fine. And Nuff. Nuff, right. So, I want to talk to you about plowing. So I here have a yoke. <laughs> right? okay, I'm not, I'm not going to strangle you, you don't have to do it up or anything. But this, this would go around the cow's neck and, and that. So if you want to stand here and just pop that on your shoulders. Excellent. So, so here we have, and this is what I want you to know about, <laughs> about plowing. Does it work? You've broken it already. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, so this is how it works. So Owen, the teacher, and this works really well because Owen's going to be teacher training soon. So Owen is the teacher. Owen the ox. Okay, and he is going to lead. Okay, he leads. Now this side, oh, they disappeared. <laughs> come back, come back. <laughs> I need you. On this side, we have, we have Nuff, the student. And you'll be doing your GCSEs next year, won't you? So you really are a student. And you follow, okay? And so we have a teacher and a student. And this is how it works. So, wonderfully, Owen the ox over here. Owen the ox. Owen the ox. So you have to imagine these are ox at the moment. Owen the ox. He's not teaching Naff the ox to follow Owen the ox. Owen the ox is teaching Naf the ox to be obedient, and he's teaching to follow the plowman who's back here. So I'll be the plowman, okay? Now I want you to imagine that, that um, Owen is Elijah. And I want you to imagine that Naf is Elisha. And this is the relationship that's going to take place. So Naf, or Elijah, is, is accepting the offer to be the student, yeah? And he's going, to be, he's going to follow. And so Elijah is going to teach Elisha to listen to God. Does that make sense? So you can take that off now. You can take that off now. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Now, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. So what he means by that is come to me. If you're really working so hard to be good, you so much want to be, to be good, and you try so hard to keep God's law, and you labor so hard, but it's so hard to do that, and you, it's such a heavy burden on you, and you just fail. Come to me, you who labor and fail, and you're heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, Jesus did it for us, didn't he? He died on the cross. And if we put our trust in him, 
He gives us rest and forgiveness. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So he's inviting us to put the yoke on. Jesus goes in this one. He's the teacher. I'm the student. I go in this one. He's inviting us to put his yoke on. <clears throat> and he says, learn from me, for I am gentle and I'm lowly of heart. That's so wonderful, because he's, like, he's not like a teacher ox that rushes off down the field and leaves you behind. No, he's gentle. He knows our needs. And these yokes were made, especially, they were tailored, especially for that particular ox. And how that's true for us, that Jesus, he wants us to follow him, and he, he will carve a yoke that's just for you. He knows your needs. He knows what you struggle with. So you take his yoke upon you, and you learn from him. For he is gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, says Jesus, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And what he's saying there is, this relationship, you're going to like this relationship. It's wonderful. Yeah. So there we are. Let's move on to our, our second story this morning. And we'll come back to this. Right down there. Our second story is about a, a, a vineyard. Naboth's vineyard, it's found in 1 Kings 21. So I'll read, and you'll see the pictures on the screen. Right, so now Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel, beside the, the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And after this, Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden. Um, because it's near my house, it's convenient, and I will give you a better vineyard, or whatever seems good for you. I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give you my inheritance of my father's. And so we see here that Naboth's response was absolutely right. And he was under pressure. He had the right response under pressure. This was a very tempting offer. To take, uh, to take the vineyard. And not only that, he said no to King Ahab. He's not a nice man. Really not a nice man. He's a dangerous man. And that must have really frightened um, Naboth, the vineyard owner, that he said no to King Ahab. But he was right to say no. Because it says in Leviticus, Leviticus 25, 23, and I think Naboth knew this. It seems he knew God's word. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me, and in all the country you possess, you shall allow a redemption of the land. So he knew that if he, gave the land, if he sold the land, if he sold his vineyard to King Ahab, he would be disobeying God. And he knew that. So he gave the right answer. But I want to go further than that. I want to say that King a that, um, Naboth gave a perfect answer. I would like to say that. Now, let me explain. A good answer would have been no. That would have been quite okay, just to say no. That would have been a good answer. But he goes further than that. See, he pointed to God's authority. Isn't it wonderful? You see, what, read what he said. He said, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. It's really, really, it's a wonderful answer. And um, we can do that today with certain things that come into our lives. And um, so let's take, for example, let's take the, the gender issue. So if someone says, there are loads and loads and loads of genders, and you can choose one, a good answer is to say, no, there's not, there's two. But a better answer is to point to God's authority and to say, God says there are two genders. God says, and we can point to the Bible. We can point to Genesis chapter 2, he made them male and female. No. So that's just a good example of, of how we can give really good answers to, um, to these, these things that put pressure on our lives. Uh, like, and we can be like Naboth. So that's wonderful, that. And uh, Naboth, he knew what to hold on to. He knew to hold on to his vineyard. So we had Elisha, who knew what to get rid of, so he could serve God better. And now we have... Naboth, he knows what to hold on to so he can serve God better. Isn't that wonderful? So, so Elisha, he listened to God through the prophet, Elijah. Naboth listened to God through his word. Ahab 
listened to Jezebel, his evil queen, and he followed Baal. So I have here, Baal looked something like that, okay? <laughs> Roughly, that's what he looked like. And what Naboth had done, not Naboth, sorry, what Ahab had done, the wicked king Ahab, it's almost like he's, there you go, he's yoked himself to a false god. He's yoked himself to Baal. That seems to be what he's done. And um, now I just wonder, how many of you know somebody who worships Baal? Anyone? Anyone here worship Baal or know someone who worship? No? I didn't think so. Maybe? Was there one there? Ahab. Ahab, Ahab did, yeah. <laughs> Very good. You were listening. Okay. Today. <laughs> but I like the answer. That's good. You're awake. That's great. Yeah, but today, I mean today, people don't worship Baal today. But, but... The teaching behind Baal worship is still very much alive today. So Baal, he's just a false god. He's, he's nothing at all. He's gone. You know, it's, it's cardboard. And Baal was nothing. But the teaching that was followed, the ideas of, the idea behind, behind Baalism was sort of like pleasure and convenience. And if you want it, you have it. You master it. And in fact, Baal's name means owner. If you want to own it, you own it. You, we see that with, with um, Ahab. He goes to the, the vineyard, and he just wants to own it, and he'll do anything to have it. And today, today, we still see not the idol, that's, that's history, but the teaching behind it. We still see that. I see it every day. You know, convenience, and if it's good for me, it's my life, let me do whatever I want. We still see that very much today. So let's carry on with our story. And we're reading from 1 Kings 21. So, and Ahab went into his house, vexed and sullen, because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him. For he said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed, and he turned his face away, and he wouldn't eat. But Jezebel, his evil wife, came in and said to him, Why is your spirit so vexed? And he said to her, Because I would. Because I spoke to that nasty red of mine. He says, well, give me a For money and you would do it. I'll give you another one. <laughs> Something like that, is what he said. <laughs> and we're going we're to quickly skip through the story because it's quite long. But what happens then is the wicked queen Jezebel, she arranges to have Naboth murdered in a terrible way. He's falsely accused and he is murdered. And then we carry on, carrying on with the story. And you shall, shall, you shall say to him, hang on, what's going on here? Hang on, I've missed the page. Here we go. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise and go down and meet Ahab, king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Uh, behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth. So you notice here, notice here, he doesn't say he's in his new vineyard. He's in the vineyard of Naboth. It's not his vineyard. He's murdered the person who owns the vineyard. But it's actually still Naboth's vineyard. He's in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. And you shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? So have you killed and also taken possession? And you shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, In the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, uh, Shall dogs lick your own blood? It's rather horrible. That's me. Ahab said to Elijah, Oh, have you found me, my enemy? He answered. I have found you, because you sold yourself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And we're going to see Ahab's response here. Now, Ahab changes the subject. That's his response. So what I want you to see here, right? what I want you to see is that Elijah comes down and he is showing King Ahab the relationship between Ahab and God. He's saying, this isn't good. You've murdered and you've stolen. The relationship between you and God is not good. So what Ahab does, he changes the subject. And he turns it on its side and he makes it between him 
and Elijah. And he says, oh, you found me, my old enemy. See, like that. And then Elijah has to turn it back on its head again. He turns it back up and, says, and he says, but you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And he brings it back to the relationship between Ahab and God. Does that make sense? And I see this today. I see it quite often when you're talking to people or you hear people and they're being, they're being asked about their relationship with God. And, and you ask about, you know, are you going to put your trust in Jesus? And they change the subject. And they, well, religion starts all the wars. And say, no, 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 we're not talking about that. We're talking, what's your relationship with God? There's a problem. There's a blockage of sin. What's your relationship with God? Oh, well, um, there's a, what about all the suffering in the world? No, 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 we're not talking about that. We're talking about your relationship with God. It's very personal. Your relationship with God. And then they change the subject again. And um, oh, the Bible's full of contradictions. There's no your relationship with God. <laughs> see, and see, Ahab did exactly the same. And people still do that today. They change the subject. They do. So how about you? This morning, are you going to change the subject? If you're, if you're here this morning and you don't know God, and your relationship with God is not good, are you going to change the subject? So, Elisha knew what to get rid of. Naboth knew what to hold on to. Ahab wanted everything for himself. And what did he do in the end? He sold himself. He sold himself to do evil. But I do pray this morning for everyone. If you're here and you're a Christian, and maybe you have been for many years, then I ask you to think about, think about the yoke. And, the inv- and um, how's your walk with Jesus going? And I'd like to ask, ask you the question of, what can you get rid of in your life? It doesn't have to be a sinful thing, but what can you get rid of in your life? Is there anything in your life you can get rid of so your walk with Jesus is, is, is better? And is there anything you need to hold on to? And if you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, then I ask you that question. How is your relationship with God? And are you going to change the subject? And please, if that's you, don't leave here today without speaking to somebody. So you can speak to me, or you can speak to Owen, or you can speak to someone at the welcome desk, but please don't leave here this morning without speaking to somebody about um, the way of salvation. So we're going, to, we're going to read this verse one more time, and we can stand, and I'll invite the band up, and we're going to stand. Let's read this slowly so it really sinks in, and we'll read it together. It is, Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you, Andy. Excellent. Just going to finish with the last song, Only a Holy God.
Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the one, the only. You are holy. You are other. You are perfect. You are pure. And yet you invite us to call you Father. We are so, so thankful for who you are and all that you've done. Amen. Amen. We're going to close our meeting there, but if what we've sung about or what Andy has spoken about has touched your heart, please, we'd love to pray with you. There'll be people over here who would love to pray with you. Maybe there are some things you want to uh, let go of. Maybe there are some things that um, someone's trying to take off you and you really want to hold tight and you just want some encouragement, some, um, some people to stand by with you in prayer. Maybe you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about, this holy God that we're speaking about, and you, you really want to, and you want to grasp hold of him. If that's you this morning, if any of those things or anything else, if you want prayer for healing, anything, please come. We'd love to pray with you. But thank you for joining us. Uh, Have a great, blessed week. God bless.